Hi you guys, so we have another tapestry. This is a 30 inch by 45 inch. I know it's not my typical five by five, but I still have yet to order some. So uh, this is already washed and soaked in soda ash. Uh, I wash this to get rid of any kind of residue from the factory or wherever it was made and then soak it in soda ash for your fiber reactive dyes. So like if you're using pro Procyon dyes. So first we're gonna match up the corners and fold that in half. And if you see any weird colors on this, I also use this table for pastel chalk so that will wash right out because I've been noticing sometimes you can't wash it all the way off the table. And then just making sure there's no wrinkles in there and we're going to fold it in half again. Flatten it out like this is probably pastel chuck. <laughs> Okay, so if you do not know how to find the center of your mandala, I have a video and I will post it in the top right hand corner of this video so that you can see exactly how I do that. Uh, I know some people have issues trying to do that. So I already know where mine is, so we're going to pull this side like this and flatten it out. And then one more time. And then you're going to flip this over and do it to the other side. Pull it up. And one more time. All right. So that is my typical mandala fold. So this would be an eight point. Uh, if you fold one more time, it would be a 16 point and it gets thicker and harder. So I don't typically do that, those. So for this one, I really wanna do a couple of teardrops. I think it would be really cool to see some teardrops. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have straight line here. So it'll be a circle and then another one and then another one. So I want three circles in the middle of my mandala. So as long as you follow those lines when you're tying it, it'll be circles. So then if you want to alternate, we can do teardrops all the way up. And we can, I've never done this before, so if for some reason you can't because the fabric's too thick, you can always just undo it, flip it over, and draw on the other side. So that's what we're going to try. So I'm going to make a teardrop. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then come up here and make another teardrop, maybe fatter. And then come up here, make another teardrop. Don't have to be perfect or the same at all. And then I'm going to do one more and I'm just, I'm only lifting this up to see how much fabric I have left. So I'm going to make this one like that. So I'm just going to do teardrops all the way up. So I'll have three different color circles and then this, these will be different colors. And then obviously this whole thing right here will be a background color. So we're going to use sinew all the way up until this teardrop. And then we're going to try to kite string everything else together. So it's not just hanging loosely. So I have my sinew. And I also show you, if you look up my video, Raya's Tips and Tricks, I show you how to make my quick slip knot, 
like this. <laughs> Some people say you don't have to do that because the sinew is sticky enough. I like to do this for extra assurance that my sinew is not going to come undone on me because that would be my luck. So this is a little big, but you can loosen it. This is extra sticky though, so <laughs> there we go. All right. So you're gonna just match up to your marker and pull it just to tighten it and hold your fabric for you. And then you'll get rid of this excess sinew, pull it until that starts going through wrap it around. My magic number is normally three times, unless it's thicker and I'll do it more. Pull it as tight as you can so the sinew will stick to itself and cut that. I cut the end with the knot super short because that's not the one you're gonna want to grab when you untie it. And I am doing separate sinew for all of this because I don't want random sinew lines throughout my tapestry if they're not necessary. So when I go to untie it, it's going to be some work, but it'll be worth it. So the gist is you're just going to tie things up so that you're matching your sinew lines. And then Tying it as tight as you can. I do like the white lines personally. If you don't like the white lines, you should try sinew because sinew is, or not sinew, sorry, kite string. Kite string will uh, give you a boundary to work with and it won't really create the white lines unless you pull it tight enough. All right, so I'll show you how to do one of these teardrops and then we'll speed through the rest of them. So this will take a lot of turning of your fabric, but you're just gonna make some, they're gonna be random pleats because the fabric is a lot thicker than like a t-shirt. So you'll just fold it so that the marker lines match up to each other as much as good as you can, like so. And then you will slip your sinew or your kite string on there to match your marker lines. Pull it tight enough to hold it for you. And then I'm going to wrap around probably four or five times just because it's thick. The first three were super easy so that isn't a big deal so you don't need as many just pull it as tight as you can now you can see for this one it pulled out some so it's not exactly on my marker line it's still going to create a teardrop it's just not going to be the one i drew so you could untie that and redo that if you want but i'm curious to see what that would look like so we're going to leave that and we're going to speed through the rest All right, you guys, so that is all the sinew. I have my kite string here, apparently connected to all of my sinew. And we're just gonna tighten everything else up. So I'm going to drape this over here with one of my fingers, hold the other end with my thumb. We'll slide it down and around. And we'll just go all the way up to make the fabric stay close together so it's not just hanging out loosely. And you can tighten as you go. If you want it flatter and then maybe scrunched it. And if you want to scrunch it, you can scrunch it. 
so there's not as much area to dye. Just keep pulling. And then I'll work my way back. So this is my original line here. So I will cut this end and tie these two together just to keep it from undoing itself. Now I'm going to let this tapestry sit until it's dried out so that when we do dye it, the colors tend to stay where you put it a lot better than if it's damp. Uh, this, I'm not sure if I'm going to do ice dye or liquid dye on this, but we will definitely think about it while it's drying out. So just let this dry out and then we'll be back to dye it and I'll show you my colors that I picked and whether I'm liquid dyeing or ice dyeing. All right, you guys, we're back with our teardrop tapestry. So I have an interesting dye placement for this one. So I have two color blues and they are robin's egg blue and seashell blue. And then I also have hot pink, deep orange, and lemon yellow. They're all from Dharma and Grateful Dyes. So what we're gonna do is where you're gonna know which colors are which. They're very obvious when I place them, so I'm not gonna go through that whole thing, but the dye placement on this, I feel like is gonna be super awesome. There will even end up being a little bit of purple in here. So once we get the dye on this, obviously it's gonna be ice dye. I got my little aluminum border on it. I'm gonna put it in my Rubbermaid tote with plenty of room for the ice to melt. And so we'll put the dye on put a little soda ash on top and then put the ice right on it. So you'll only see the dye process, but however you've been doing your ice dye, that's how you'll do it. I'm sure it'll turn out awesome. I do have some videos that show my uh, Rubbermaid tote setup. I'll post a card up in the top right hand corner. So we're going to get started. So colors again, rabbit's egg blue, seashell blue, hot pink, deep orange, and lemon yellow. And you'll be able to tell which is which. Then you're going to leave this sitting for at least 24 hours. Rinse it in cold water first to get rid of the soda ash. Then warm up the temperature a little bit to help get rid of all the dye until the water runs clear. And then we can reveal it. Hey guys, so we're back with our teardrop tapestry. So I'm just gonna get right into this. And if you have not been to my channel before, welcome, I'm glad you're here. I do tons of different tie-dye tutorials. Don't uh, hesitate to ask in my comments either if you wanna see something specific. So this is all teardrops really with a cool background. I have some circles in the middle. We used yellow, orange, hot pink, seashell blue, and robin's egg blue. And this is a 30 inch by 45 inch tapestry. All right, let's open it up. Ooh, that looks pretty cool. I would call that super psychedelic. 
So now all I'm gonna do with this is throw it in the washer with Synthropol on hot water with cold water rinses if you have that option. And then I'm gonna hang dry this. That's what I pretty much do for all of my stuff. If I do anything different, I normally tell you. So this is today's tapestry. I hope you like it. I'll see you next time. Happy tie-dyeing.